ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NJPW Pro Wrestling Review. I am your co-host, Undersea, right over here. It's the cow tipping princess herself. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? Uh, I'm doing great, Andre. I'm not tipping cows. I'm tipping weights, though. Yeah. Look at that bicep. I did, too. I, did, I, I, I went and lifted today, too. Yeah, yeah. Look at, that, look at that movement. Look at that movement. Yes. I you know who I saw at the gym today? Uh, your crush? Guess. On top of my crush? Uh, I saw on Chuck. Top of your crush? Chuck. Chuck. Chucky. My 70 year old bodybuilding mentor. Chucky. Oh, I haven't I haven't heard you talk about him the in Chuckster. forever. Yeah, and he was competing over a couple couple weekends ago so i saw him today he was all in red and white repping canada in the gym today i think today was a back day for him showed me some bicep stuff made my arms hurt a lot gotta love chuck how are oh, you doing i'm doing good uh yeah i went to got a good day back at work today first day back of the week i hope my tuesdays we're recording this on tuesday tuesday's always my first day back of the week uh mm -hmm. but yeah uh got a good work in in where went to the gym with my mama she, she came to the gym with me today so we didn't work out together she went and did her own thing and i went and lifted heavy things and she went and did cardio oh. stuff so yeah, yeah it was a good day <laughs> i even sent you a yeah. picture and you guys you did. She, she, she really appreciated the the response back so no i gotta love Mama's my mom's excited my mom is backwards. I, I think I would like Mel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. I mean, some think they'd like me. Others think I'm a bad influence. We got to have balance. Oh, uh, yeah. But we're not here to talk about my mom. We're here to talk about professional wrestling. We're going to talk the, the New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34 Days 7, 8, nine and ten yes a lot but we're gonna try and keep this mm -hmm. as tight and concise as we can so we're gonna get into it in just seconds but i want to thank each and every one of you thank you all so much for joining us here um we appreciate uh, all the support we keep growing we're getting so close to 200 subscribers to the channel thank you so thank you so very much um please like the video it helps us out so much uh uh share uh like the video subscribe to the subscribe. channel subscribe to the channel comment down below because that's we want to hear from you we love getting your feedback everybody in there joe joe demetrius frank ray ray z and all the others that have been uh dropping uh comments in the, all the last few shows thank you so guys so very much for everything um please uh, in there. Jason, uh jason rutledge in there thank you for on the on the chop oh, talk Thank you all so very much for all the great comments and everything. We love hearing from you. Uh, please don't forget to hit uh, to share us out to your friends, family, cow tipping friends, and all the other great people that are working out there doing all the hard work. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. No, I don't want any. I, do you remember when we used to like start at like 930 at night recording these? Or sometimes at 10 at night recording these and the ding dong was oh. like, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Yeah. no. Back yeah, when my now job, it's questionable. Now, back when my job was uh, get me home at 9.30 at night, we have to start recording at 10. Yeah, yeah. Not a problem anymore now, though. Yay. No. I work a nice, a nice eight, well, eight for to five job. So. For now, it's yeah. good. Yes. So we're going to jump into it. G1 Climax, day 7, 8, 9, and 10. We're going to kick it off day 7. And we kick in the first... Oops, I have to roll back up to the top of my notes. There we go. The first match on the show was Evil versus Callum Newman. Uh, Newman hits a corner drop kick, uh, but uh, misses them. Uh, the that like hop-up stomp, almost like a mar the double stomp Marlo crash. But he ends up scoring a boost psycho knee for two. Evil... Uh, Running, running into new, running Newman into the exposed corner twice and hits everything is evil for the win, going five and oh in this tournament so far. Who thought evil was going to get the undefeated run in this tournament? Sure as heck wasn't me. Well, we certainly knew it was going to be the shenanigans were going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, and boy, howdy, were they in this one? I think this is the most shenanigans that he's had to do. 
in the tournament it was against Callan Newman, which I must say, Mr. Newman, take that as a matter of uh, good job. Cold start. Yeah. You had to make Evil and Little Dick work extra hard to pick up that win. Making that little dick work extra hard. Yeah, we love making them little dicks work hard. Uh, uh, that is New Japan commentary. <laughs> uh, uh, this show, I who was Jeff Cobb was on commentary for this show. I think doing a mm -hmm. did an amazing job, especially in the Callum Newman match and the Greater Con match. He's really talking about the people themselves. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. how we connected there. So yeah, he did mm -hmm. a really good job on this because the um, quality doesn't. Quality goes down from here. <laughs> um, also got a shout out, Kenta Sato. Poor mm. Kenta Sato. He got royally kind of thrown around in this one too. And he's always, he, he on this tour has been the prime yeeti for, yep. for refs lately. They've, they've kind of taken that pressure off Marty Asadi. So shout out Kenta Sato for earning a raise, I think. Yeah. So we move on to my pick of the evening. It is Jake Lee versus the great. Oh, Khan, again, this I thought these two just flowed so well together. Jake Lee is really finding his stride in this mm -hmm. tournament, as really getting in just this match was so good. Like Jake Lee getting the better of Khan early, getting sending him to the floor. And like he rips and then Lee just takes the wrap off his own arm. Going, mm -hmm. now I'm I'm ready to fight. I don't need my arm supported. Uh he ends up uh goes out whipping Khan into the barricades. Uh, Lee getting this really nice cravat, that cravat hold. Like it around the head. Oh, mm -hmm. I love I love a cravat. Uh, just like Chris Hero's theme song. I just gotta hammer lock the cravat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. dear. Uh Colin, we're getting the dragon screw at one point, working over the knee of Lee, and Lee get really irritated with the amount of shots that Kam is taking at his knee in this match. Um mm -hmm. he ends up getting a knee bar at one point, or gets an ankle lock, then grapevine's leg, then turns that into a knee bar. But Lee eventually does get to the ropes. Uh, the trading chops at one point. Con, uh, Lee catches Khan with the giant killing knee as he dives in for a takedown. And that looked just picture perfect. Yes, yes. He's very good at that that move. And I do like the name as well. He's got some very interesting, unique names for some, I don't want to say basic looking moves. Yeah. But his move set is pretty structured, if that's the right word. Yeah, so we get to the end of the match. Lee misses the face break shot in the corner. It's just that running boot or the haluba kick. And Khan hits a huge release German out of the corner. Lee fights back. He goes for the choke slam, but it's blocked. But then Khan's eliminator is blocked. And they just go into a bunch of reversals. Khan gets him into the sheet killer, into the flatliner, then picks him up. Eliminator. For Khan for the win. I was so happy here to see Khan pick up this win. Mm -hmm. It was a nice little refresher for him. Um, I felt really, really, this was a really, really fun match. Um, Con, uh, Con Lee coming in very, very confident in this one. I really like the confidence that he kind of walks in with that swagger. It's very comparable to like, maybe a less dramatic Thecla I would compare it to. It's very suave. It's very like, hmm, whatever kind of arrogance. And I really like it. It's a very refreshing personality to see in NJPW. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add to this one. Yeah. Again, I thought just really good match. And I think Lee, is, it, even while he is losing repeatedly, he he's really finding his stride and mm -hmm. how he's working. He's like, Working with people, it's just it, it, it's just so good. He's so good. He's so mm -hmm. good. We move on. Show to Umino versus Zach Saber Jr. Sorry, it is the uh man who uses everybody else's moves. Show to Umino versus the original Zach Saber Jr. Because he has Does that so that make him a mimic. I guess so. Uh, well, and remember, mimics get smarter the longer they're alive. According to D and D lore, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope that's the case. <laughs> uh, 
the end of this match comes. Saber gets a roller for two. Saber avoids the drop kick into the ankle lock, and he pulls him up into a release German. But Umino comes back with the blaze blade to the back of the head. He then gets another move he stole, the Emerald Flosion, Okada style, then hits the, uh, his stolen finisher, the Death Rider, for the win. I don't know. I just, I, I, still, I still think Umino still has not found who he is yet. He, I just really don't think so. I agree, and I feel like he's floundering a little bit, kind of struggling to stay afloat in this G1. He is picking up wins, but they're not dominant wins. No. They're, they're by-the-skin-of-his-teeth wins. And where some would say that that kind of makes him an elevated winner, well, if he's barely coming out of these wins and this is the tournament, the end of the tournament is going to be the best of the best of the best. Some of which he's probably already faced. Well, he has already faced. So it's like, I yeah, you're you're right. We're we're kind of we we haven't seen who he is, and he's made very very little progression forward. I, this injury is really a big problem. Yeah, again, it it's it, it's interesting to see where he goes because again, I feel like he needs. I think the only original move in his in his move set is his ignition. Like Blaze Blaze Osprey's move was he took it from Osprey. Uh, the Emerflosion took from o Okada. Death Rider he took from Boxley. His style he took from Tanahashi, and his hair he took and from Naito. And, or st style and look took from Naito and Tanahashi. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he'll get there. I have faith. He's, yeah, he'll get there. He, he is the golden child after all. I have high hopes for him. We all do. We move on to Mel's pick, and it is Shingo Takagi versus Gabe Kid. Yes. Holy man! This, uh, if you if you hadn't have picked this, I was gonna pick this. This was <laughs> so these two just they pretty much just start beating the piss out of each other early on. Mm -hmm. Just the chops, the strikes, the elbows, every the lariats, everything. They're just beating the living hell out of each other. Uh, mm -hmm. Kid ends up. Biting Takagi on the forehead at one point. Just a mm -hmm. little bit later, Takagi ends up biting Kid on the forehead. It was just, it just, and like Kid, Kid, kid like Takagi bites Kid on the forehead. So Kid comes back with an exploder suplex. Just, oh, these guys just, ev just everything they were hitting throughout here. Uh, Takagi in those wrist clutch strikes where he's got the wrist and he's just like smashing into somebody. I think, I don't think there's many people that do that better than Shingo Takagi. I agree. Yeah, Clearly, um, I agree. <laughs> we're just gonna jump to the end and let Mel talk all about this. Uh, they are headbutting each other, just gross, unprotected headbutts. Uh, yeah. Takagi drops Kid with a hard strike to the face. Uh, Kid comes back with another headbutt, hits the pile driver, and holds onto it, rolling through to stand up into another pile driver, and he gets the win. But like. If you want to see two dudes beat the hell out of each other, go watch this match. This, yeah, this is a hoss battle right here. This was two meaty men slapping meat. Mm -hmm. Frick, it was so good. This was a battle of the brutes, essentially. Um, and anything you can do, I can do better. Um, as you mentioned, with the forehead bites, the lariats, the strikes, it was literally just one starting it, the other ending it, one starting it, the other ending it. It was just progression just at its most perfection um there was a pumping bomber that um shingo fed to gabe kid that gabe kid went inside out with when i tell you that that is impressive there is not a lot of things that will make gabe kid go inside out he's a big boy this kid flew he flew today it was great yeah. um yeah that that double pile driver by kid when he did that i was like it's that's done he is done and it was what i appreciated even more which added even more to the character development i feel of gabe kid was the sportsmanship for those of you in audio i'm doing air quotes i wanted to leave this for you <laughs> the sportsmanship end that um gabe kid was bowing to the crowd bowing to shingo 
um, you know, asking for the handshake. I'm getting the war dog handshake, which is a kick in the nads. Yeah. So nice. So nice. But it maintains that because you've got that respect for just just a glimpse, just a, just a shimmer, just a a pinch of pixie dust, if you will. And then we went back to the War Dogs. It was great. This match was freaking great. This was my main event. I, I didn't need to watch anything else. And, and, and yeah, the, the, I, I think this should have main evented the show compared to what did main event the show. Not that the match in the main event was bad. It just it wasn't as good as this. I agree. Yeah, it's like they, they showed up and said, hey, follow this, jerks. Gato fix it. Well, it's just like they were like, hey, we're not main event. Ah, follow this. You're not going to be able to. And that's how it felt. <laughs> oh, that sounds similar, doesn't it? Yeah. So we go to the main event, Tetsuya Naito versus Sonata. Um, and I literally wrote this as the first note in my before I, as I was starting to watch this match. This is not a match that I'm looking forward to. Because, again, it's we've seen it, what, twice this year? We have, yeah. Already. And I'm just neither match with these two lit the world on fire for me. And I just don't care again. Again, it was a good match. Um, mm -hmm. at the end of the match comes Sonata does a kip up and hits a shining wizard. He goes up, hits the rounding body press, but only gets two. Uh, Sonata gets Naito up, but Sonata avoids dead fall into it and gets an inverted suplex. Uh, Destino is stopped into the O'Connor roll for two. Then Sonata with a shining wizard. Deadfall reversed into a sort of Destino. So, uh, but he, so he only gets two. And then Destino is hit and Naito gets the win. Fun mm -hmm. match. It just mm -hmm. me was probably the least interesting one on the show. Yeah, which is a, a damn shame considering the history with those these two. There should be a pretty easy story to tell here. And I just don't, it didn't hit that mark for me. Again, it's disappointing because I'm trying to figure out what it is about Sonata that I can't get behind and why with people like Naito who have that, like seemingly, what's the word I'm trying to find? Just effortless charisma. He struggled a lot to maintain the crowd's kind of, full interest in this one and it's disappointing yeah um yeah i don't have too much more to add to that yeah so uh quickly before we move into the next day a block point totals evil with uh 10 points zach saber jr with eight gabe kid showed umino shingo to or gabe um or gabe kid showed umino with six points each shingo takagi callum newman tessia naito and sonata with four and the Great Okan and Jake Lee with two points each. And that's after day number seven. So day number eight, we get into and we kick it off with my pick. It is Yota Suji versus Bolton Oleg. Holy hoss. These two just like in. Uh, I thought these two just flowed so well together. Um mm -hmm. Bolton dropping Suji immediately with the shoulder block. Suji hits Bolton, but then Bolton drops him again. Gets that it goes for the flying body sausage, but Suji gets the knees up. Uh Suji gets goes for the salmon splash, but Bolton gets his knees up because it's the exact same move. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like they learned it in the same place. <laughs> But it just everything. Suji trying for the boss and crab, but Bolton's like fighting not to get put in it. Um Again, just great back and forth. And now we have a name. Walker Stewart is officially named uh, the gut wrench swing of Bolton Oleg. It's called the Bolton Shake. That's what he's calling it. It's the Bolton Shake. I like it. I like I'd call it shake and not stirred myself, but. Yeah. Uh, so Bolton gets the corner splash, hits the shoulder block, drop a sushi, and he does get the flying body sausage. He then picks him up into the Bolton Shake and then just yeets Suji across the ring. 
Uh, Bolton then fighting off the Boston Crab. Again, if he misses the corner splash, as soon as he gets a roll up for two, and then hits just this kick to the face. This is like up kick to the face. And then he puts him in the Boston Crab, but Bolton powers through. Uh, but Suji ends up dro- uh, dropping the hip into the back uh, to break it and then hits a curb stomp for two. Mm-hmm. These two just go in a war here. Uh, Suji gets this huge knee to the head but misses Marlo Crash. And Bolton hits his shotgun drop kick. He avoids the verdict, which is the F, which is his F5 million. thought I've been calling oh. it, but it's, it's now the verdict. Uh, and he gets a, and Suji gets a small package. Suji super kicks Bolton, but he comes back with a lariat uh, to Suji, who's running. Uh, Bolton powers him up, fights and fights, gets Kamikaze, but can only get two. He didn't have that running start; it was just a jump, just a jump for Kamikaze. He didn't have that running start to get the extra power. Mm-hmm. Uh, he goes for Kamikaze again, but Suji grabbing the rope, slips off the shoulders, hits the Gene Blaster, and he gets the win. Absolutely incredible match, I thought, with these two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was uh I was excited to see the salmon splash. I was disappointed to see it blocked, but fair play, fair play. Um yeah, I, what I really also like about his little bolt and shake, shaking my I like shaking not stirred. Anyway, um the kip up that he does after the yeeting. It just adds that little touch of Bolton flair to it. I really like it because it's an extra little like, look what I can do. And it's like, it is super impressive that someone of that size can do that. Because, you know, we watch people. I struggle to do a kip up partially because I always end up landing on my hair and giving myself whiplash. Um, But yeah, I had hope for like a brief second when Suji put in the Boston Crab, I was like, mm, never good to see it. We did not. We did not get He usually uses the Boston Crab to feed into a dingle dangle. He did not. And he fed it into the curb stop. I'll, I'll take it. Take it for now. Um, yeah, good pick. Good pick. I really like this one. This was a really, really good follow up, especially coming off of the night before. Yeah, I thought I thought these two just had such great chemistry together. Mm-hmm. We move on to the second match of the show. It is Hanare versus you, Yoyumer. Again, I thought really strong match. Uh, the end of this mm-hmm. match comes. Uh, the dead bull gets stopped. Hanare fights a running Yoyumer into the corner, hits the liver punch, and then the uh, uh, the spin kick. But Yoyumer comes back with a Pele kick. Hanare gets a PK and then a rampage for two. He he goes for Streets of Rage, but it's reversed into a Snap Dragon. But you American only get two. Uh, Deadbolt is blocked, and they trade headbutts. Hanari hits that flying headbutt out of nowhere. He picks him up. Streets of Rage for the win. Again, I thought these two had a really good flow together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. I felt that um, Yuya did get the shit beat out of him in this one, though. Um, kind of. I already really put him through the ringer, but I felt that this was an evolution and another step forward for you. Yeah, we're starting to see him kind of step us into something I think that is supposed to be him, unless like somebody else. Because I kind of felt for a while there that he was Sonata's cookie cutter. And now he's kind of like really stepping apart in a way from that i mean the look is still very similar but now the the fighting and the the action that he's bringing the entertainment that he's bringing is starting to look a little different we're starting to see him evolve and i am despite the losses i'm loving what we're getting out of it i agree um i think he's starting to emulate a bit of tanahashi that you heard gabe kid calling out uh like Tribute to Tanahashi in this match and saying, Why are you trying to copy Tanahashi? Why are you trying to copy Tanahashi? Like, I mean, because there's only so many wrestling moves we can do, my guy. <laughs> That's it's why. True. But <laughs> the, the, one, the one thing I'll say about you, Amira's tights, it looks like he has soup, like it's soup, like a bowl of soup on his tights, <laughs> like tomato soup, or like some kind of like soup. I don't know what it is, but it looks like it's soup. red, so I assume tomato. Yeah, it looks like some kind of soup. <laughs> I mean, he's maybe not... he likes soup. 
I think it's supposed to be lava, but he's to me, he's not the heat storm, he's the soup storm. So, <laughs> oh, we move on. El Phantasmo with Jado versus Jeff Cobb. And I thought this was a really strong match. I was considering this one on this show. Uh, I think these two did really well. I like the little spot of ELP just sitting in the corner when the match starts and Cobb mm-hmm. coming over and, and picking him up and giving him like the handshake and then ELP just rolling him up. And it kind of put ELP into the heel mode a little bit in this match. While did, still being yeah. very much facey, he worked the heel. He yeah. did. He did. And I enjoyed it. I've always enjoyed ELP more as a as a heel than a face. Just because I find his comedy as a heel a lot more enjoyable. Mm. Um, also very refreshing in, in regards to all the other kind of healy shit that we have going on, mainly with House of Torture. Um, it, it's a refreshing kind of angle. And also like, you know, War Dogs too. I mean, that's shenanigans on itself, but that's just hyper violence, right? He kind of adds this like not quite annoying as Viano esque comedy. Mm-hmm. to his matches while still being something worth you know being afraid of and and having to be concerned about cuz that sudden death comes out of nowhere. Yeah. I do have to put up one spot in this match before I jump to the end. ELP mm-hmm. just or sorry, uh Cobb just taking ELP and just lifting him into the air and he's yeeting him up in the air like he goes like halfway across the ring but with such incredible height. That was awesome. Incredible height and incredible force as a poor man came crashing back down to the mat. Yeah, and then Cobb went snowboarding on the back of the Canadian, you know? He did. <laughs> he did. He was shredding. Was it shredding? Shredding yeah, some... I think so. I'm not I'm not cool, so I don't know what the link I don't know the lingos. I don't know either. I have a snowboard, but then I injured my knee and I can't do anything. There you go. But I, I I just want it usually used to surfing, but he was snowboarding on the on the he back was. of the Canadian. Um, it makes sense. The end of the match comes. Cobb reverses CR two into the F five thousand. Um, they, they end up starting trading elbow strikes at center. ELP hits a pump kick. Cobb with a, it's a this this like running just body attack to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, then ELP comes back with a drop kick. Uh, ELP go, starts running. Goes for the springboard, but gets caught into Tour of the Islands for the win. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good match. I actually really enjoyed it um, because Cobb also has that kind of similar way that he wrestles and that obviously he's a big, intense boy. He, he's not somebody to muck with, but he's clearly got an interesting sense of humor that translates very, very well into in-ring competition and his his moves um, as seen with his like surfing, snowboarding kind of stuff. So yeah, this was a really, really fun match to watch for sure. My heart bleeds a little bit for ELP. But well, I still have well, hope that he can play spoiler in the rest of this tournament. Fellow Canadian, we I, I I always like to support my Canadian brethren, unless they're facing United Empire Team DK members. <laughs> it's true. It's true. His loyalty is swayed very easily by Aussies <laughs> and Brits and, and, and Brits guys. apparently and Japanese guys and guys <laughs> and Hawaiian guys. I mean, okay, we're we're adding so many yeah. to the list. You're starting to look a little feeble. <laughs> it, it, it happens. We move on. <laughs> it is Goto versus Red and Narita. I got uh, Narita cheating throughout, but not in like that overly like evil way. Yeah, um, not not until the little sword fight though. Yeah, so they end up getting into a sword fight in this match. With Goto with his using the staff and, and Narita using the push up bar and and Goto wins the sword fight. It was great. I mean, at what cost? Because now his sticky stick is very bent. Yeah, uh, he, he he gets uh, he ends up getting. But though after the sword fight, he gets run into the ref. Uh, but he ends up blocking the low blow. Hits headbutts to Narita. Hits a lariat. Um. Narita ends up grab, uh, grabbing the ref as Goto's going for the GTR and then hits a low blow to Goto. 
Uh, hits an up kick to the face. Hits the double cross. And Ren Narita is your winner. That was a stupid win. Mm -hmm. I liked the match overall, but it was oh, a yeah. stupid end. Yeah. Um, because they they used the ref a little too many times in this one. And it was Marty Asadi. Marty Asadi is a great ref to have in those spotty situations. But, like, it, it was a little... If for this one, it was borderline being too much. It was borderline House of Torture shenanigans for me. Luckily, it was just from Ren Rita. But that in itself kind of presents a problem to me. Because if he was borderline House of Torture as a unit shenanigans on his own, that means that we are reaching a new level of annoyance with House of Torture that we're not going to have to deal with when the show comes back. I don't want that. Oh, show. Oh, oh show. no. Oh, no, it's show. But you know who will be coming back soon, maybe, too? Yo! 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 Some, I, I saw a report that said it's going to be out till end of year, if not longer. I, I mean, I've, I've not heard anything, so you'd be the one to trust on that one. I could be wrong, though. I could have been just reading some random dude just battling online heard, like myself. So I never heard the full extent of, of the injury that Yo sustained, so I don't know if he needed surgery or not to repair. For myself, as someone who's like had a similar dislocation and didn't need surgery, it was about two months of, of rehab and then like about two or three more months of like consistent work to get it back to a point where i was comfortable with it so roughly about five-ish months they're a little over halfway there then so okay. yeah. we, we know move that on. my ability to know time and space continuum right now is not good yeah you don't exist within the proper space and time continuum I no that. i do not <laughs> We have on the Mel Balls pick. No surprise here. David Finley versus Kanosuke Takeshita. Uh, I really like that that jersey, the War Dogs jersey that Finley was wearing uh, down yeah. to the ring. I really like that. I thought it looked great. Uh, you know where you can get it? Uh, Toka on Shop Global. Yeah, cheap plug, cheap plug. Good job. You caught on to that. I, I got to guess there for a second. <laughs> Gold star, Andre. <laughs> Uh, this is a great, uh, dude, Finley doing the million dollar dream in this match. The, I, I was like, oh, or the oh, Cobra shit. clutch, whatever, Cobra clutch, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I really liked that you pulled that out in this match. I was like, mm, I agree. Nice. Um, no. uh, Kanosuke getting a beautiful brain buster in this match. Looks so good. Um, they're, the, they're probably on the outside at one point. Uh, Philly ends up running Takeshi in the post, uh, uh, and then he uh, off the apron to the, into the post, and then to the floor. Finley runs him in the barricade, then brings him back in and just hits this brutal-looking dominator for two. Uh, he ends up hitting rolling elbows, but Kanosuke comes back with the power drive knee. Uh, he uh, Kanosuke goes for the Falcon Arrow, but it's reversed into the Trash Panda into Oblivion, and Finley gets two again. The just the reversals for each other were just so good. Um, the ref gets taken out. Finley hits the buckle bomb. Uh, Kanosuke fights off the power bomb, hits his own power bomb, and then Gato starts distracting Red Shoes on the floor to stop the catcher from getting a pin. Um, Finley gets using the shillelagh, but the ref comes. The ref eventually gets in, but Finley only gets two. Overkill stopped into an elbow shot. Uh, Gato trips up to catch him, but Finley takes, uh, 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 ends up taking out Gato, knocking him off the apron by accident. And to catch it's a poison Rana and the blue thunder bomb, but he can only get two. I'm like, come on. He goes for that uh, raging fire falcon arrow, but it gets reversed into the backslide. And, and Finley rolls him into the overkill for the win. Man, these two just killed it. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, this was a battle of of alphas. You got the alpha himself in Kanosuke Takeshka, and you got the alpha dog himself within the war dogs in David Finley. 
this was and this was exactly what you would expect out of a dog fight it was both of these guys trying to fight for dominance and at some point they were both scrambling um mm -hmm. finley just, oh, man just the the character development he has done in this g1 has just been tremendous since winning that global title he has just been on an absolute war path and i love it i love seeing the war dogs i love seeing him in these shows and i love seeing him against all this different talent but takashka oh my god so good in this match the that blue thunder bomb i mean i said it before i'll say it again everybody and their mom freaking bounces off this thing he gets them so quick and so hard with that thing that you can't help but bounce a foot foot and a half off of the freaking mat it's crazy but the funniest part for me was when Takashka was on the outside there with Finley and he's pulling all the chairs out from underneath the ring and Gabe is on um commentary I think at this point mm -hmm. and he's just like <laughs> he's like he's copying me he's copying me <laughs> I'm like it's but we can't lie about that because no one else has buried a mofo in the chairs like that. I except for maybe in Stardom Tora, Konami. Tora, Tora and Konami, yeah. <laughs> but like in New Japan, no, he no, he's got a point there. Um, and then Takeshka hitting the moon salt onto David Finley after burying him under the chairs. What I thought was fascinating about that moment, and I don't know if it was intentional or accidental. But in that moment, uh, the ref is being distracted. Yeah, so the ref is being distracted by Gato. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting that Gato was distracting the ref for Kinosuke to be doing something to pull off on Finley. There's an odd timing there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was coincidental, to be honest. Um, but just very odd. I mean, it helped because, yeah, that would have been technically a disqualification. So, yeah, worked out nicely anyway. Um, yeah, I loved this match. Um, and, and for me, it was elevated with Gabe Kidd on commentary to be cheering on his boy, David Finley. Now, there, again, there was a lot of bullying happening in this night, but like it was kind of like, like the kind of razzing that you would like hear among friends, mm -hmm. like the kind of razzing where it's like, you know, how some girls will just like walk into each other's presence and be like, what up, bitch? That kind of vibe. It, that was the kind of vibe that I got with Gabe Kidd and Stuart Walker. Like Gabe Kidd's the, the pit bull friend and Walker Stewart is the Pomeranian. Very big Pomeranian. <laughs> Excuse me, that's a giant Pomeranian. <laughs> but, like, you know what I get? Like, the vibes, that was the kind of energy that they had. You know, Walker was a very loud talker and would be defiant in some of the things that he said. Very much a Pomeranian, but he'd stand the frick down every time the pit bull barked. Mm -hmm. So, just like a Pomeranian. Because uh, Pomeranians, I would think, are a little bit smarter than Chihuahuas. Wouldn't you agree, Koji? He agrees. <laughs> Quick point update, B-Block after night number eight. Uh, David Finley, Kanosuke Takesha, Hanare, Yuya Yurimura, Jeff Cobb, and Ren Narita, all with six points. Suji, Bol uh, Bolton Oleg, and Hiroki Goto with four points. And El Fantasma, sadly, just hanging out in the back with two points. We'll get you there, sir. We'll get you there. I'll be happy with, with six. Let's get you six. Broken out. <laughs> no, we move on to fix it. night number nine. Bellboss pick. It is. Yes. Oop, I, wow, that screwed that up. All right, there's my notes. Jake Lee versus Callum Newman. I thought these two just so good. Just Lee going for that face break shot immediately, but misses again. 
I think Newman working around and just the speed and the pump kicks and the flying kicks that he was doing to Lee throughout this match was absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Again, Lee working that cravat in this match. Let's go. The hammer lock that cravat. Yo, just like just like Chris Hero's theme song says too. I know I've said that twice on the show, but I have to. You have. Every time it's a croc comes up. <laughs> uh, Lee uh, with strikes, but Newman sweeps him down, hits that double stomp to the back. I love this kid is just so good. Um, uh, uh, Newman getting a, uh, a, P a fake a fakes up the PK, hits a and hits a PK into a standing moon for two. Again, uh, Lee getting uh, fights off a of Boston Crab, sends Newman to the floor. Uh, Newman catches him from PK, sweeps him down. Go and hits the, the moonsault off the second turnbuckle to to Lee on the floor. Um, then towards the at the end of this match, Lee is calling for the chokes, them, but Newman runs him down for two. Lee ends up hitting a giant killing knee, gets uh, Newman into the corner, hits that face break shot in the corner, and gets the win. Yeah. First of all. Damn, did they do a great freaking job making me believe that Callum Newman was going to pick up the win in this one. To the moment that it was happening, I was like, no, they had me on a completely different path entirely. Good job. You faked me out. Um, what I loved in the beginning of this was Callum was not picking up the pace too, too quickly. Um, kind of pacing Jake Lee quite a bit. And we saw Lee trying to to pull his fuckery, if you will, kind of trying to get Newman up here and then pulling back, trying to get him down here, pulling back, trying to get him up here. He was pulling him in very similar to how like Lady C will do the, the height advantage in, in stardom. Um, Callum having none of it. At one point, Lee goes down with his hand. Newman just kicks it away like, no, fuck your face. Let's let's do this. Um, yeah, then Newman picked up the speed and booted Lee right in the face, and it was tremendous. Um, there was one point, that just the speed of Callum, where he picked up the speed, he slid and grabbed the ankle of Lee to pull the feet out and then followed up with that double stomp to the back. He's just so quick, so unique, so cool with his styling. Um, there was the three PK kicks plus the standing moonsault, I think you mentioned, was phenomenal. Um there was uh, Callum blocking the kick from the apron and then dropping Lee on his face, following up with the uh, the moonsault off that middle turnbuckle diggly doodly. I don't know what it's called. Turnbuckle. Yeah. Buckle thing. No, um, right. Super, super good. Like just so quick, so good, so precise. Uh, he's he's really starting to remind me not just of like Osprey. But with that perfectionism, he's also reminding me a bit of of Pac in his oh. NJPW days before going to WWE. I thought um, you were gonna. I thought you were gonna say uh, uh, Kota Ibushi. That lit. That move is literally out of Kota Ibushi's uh, playbook. Yeah, yeah, but like in regards to the the perfectionism of his craft. Um, I would have to say that Pac is one of those people who you can tell has has sat there and done moonsaults like 200 times in a row to make sure that his muscle memory is good to do the, the thing. I feel like Callum Newman gives me the same vibes. He is so perf perfectionistic in his ability to perform his moves very similar in the same way that Pac does. Um, there is also a tornado kick. That Norman, Norman Newman. <laughs> Where did I get that? That Newman did that just again, so picture perfect the way he spins around and comes in for that. Um, I loved Lee faking the PK kick and putting the sleeper on Callum again, just speaks to their fuckery and how they were just messing with people in this or messing with each other in this. And I loved it because it added a little bit of a, a story in there which they kind of like already kind of felt like they had you know 
Newman wasn't as actively involved in the United Empire feud um, as, as the other members. And, and Jake Lee wasn't even a part of the War Dogs when that feud kind of happened. But there is some some very obvious tension that kind of is happening between these two. And I hope we see them meet up again, either in tag or singles competition, because these two were fire together. The chemistry that they had, so good. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention, or sorry, last two things I wanted to mention, the kill shot drop kick is what I believe Walker called his shotgun drop kick. Sure. By um, Newman. So good. So, so good. Um, and then the last thing was uh, Lee using the Oz Cutter momentum to feed into the choke slam was just brilliant. Oh, so, so good. good. So yeah, good. the transitions and just the abilities that these two had just flowed and connected so effortlessly together. I loved this match. Yeah, insanely strong match. Insanely mm -hmm. strong match. Mm -hmm. We move on to Evil. Versus the great Orkan. I think this is probably the best match Evil has had in, in his entire tournament so far. Uh, these two did so well together. Uh, Togo getting involved. Uh, they end up getting, I think they got they got Magic Killer on Khan at one point. Uh, Evil only gets two off it. Everything is Evil gets stopped. Khan snaps the arm. But Togo hit, end up hitting Khan with a chair when he's running the ropes. Uh, Khan fights off Togo. Planches Togo on the and then planches over the top to hit Togo on the floor. I thought that was great. Uh, Kong comes back in, but he gets run into the exposed corner, then tossed into it again. He gets hit with a Larry for two. Khan ends up fighting off everything is evil into the sheep killer, into the flatliner, then picks him up, hits the eliminator for the win. <laughs> yes. Come on. Con breaking the streak, baby. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Con. All hail. We all hail today. The great O'Con. Yeah. <laughs> Crowns up. Yes, sir. Like, uh, I mean, what do you add to that? He beat evil. <laughs> that is all we need. Yep. Evil has been slain. Evil. Well, I mean, can we really kill evil? No. We can only transport into other vessels. Evil always finds a way. Evil always finds a way. <laughs> we move on. Shota Umino versus. Wait, did my... no, I, I, something wrong here, didn't I? No, no, that's right. No, the next match should be Naito and Kid. Oh wait, no, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I had the, I had the I put the graphics backwards. So Tetsuya Knight over Scape Kid. The Japanese champion versus the American champion. David Finley on commentary saying this really should have been the main event. And I agree. Um because even though I, I did pick the main I did pick the main event as my pick, in reality, when you have the American champion, your strong champion versus the IWGP champion, your Japanese champion, um didn't that doesn't that scream main event to you? Even though the main event was absolute fire, but uh, I think Walker said it. Uh, that kid was mad about it on commentary. I mean, is you, when you're right, you're right. I mean, it would make sense to. I mean, considering neither man in the main event is a champion right now, yeah. And kind of considering the match we got out of that, yeah. Mind you, that main event was fire. Oh, we'll talk about that. Uh, the end of this match mm -hmm. comes Naito and Kid are trading shots. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Naito gets the Rana to reverse the uh, gut wrench by uh, Gabe Kid and hits an atomic drop. They trade strikes. Kid comes in with the rebound there, but Naito ducks it, gets a Destino. But he, as he's rolling around, he ends up revert bringing it down into a small package. And he gets the win out of nowhere. I was like, what? So Knight ends up rolling to the floor. He goes over onto the Japanese commentary table and just lays out on it and does his uh does his LIJ pose. I was like, all right. I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> it certainly wasn't the ending I was expecting, but it it was fun. It was really fun. And like 
we got to see them kind of mess around with each other a little bit throughout this match, which made me happy. This was, again, though, I definitely would have expected this to be main event. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I thought really good match to these two. I thought very oh, yeah. strong. Maybe with the way the finish was, that's why maybe you don't want to finish a card with that kind of finish. Maybe that's what you're looking at. I mean, at. they've certainly finished with Worser in this tournament. Yeah, <laughs> evil. evil winning. Yeah, I agree. We move on. It's, oh, no, I got to back up. Back. I got to back up. Back it up. Back it in. Sonata versus Shota Umino. Uh, my first note was this match is less than exciting for me. That's my first note as this, this match started. It was a good match. I thought these two worked well together. Nothing again. This is one where I'm. I was. I don't feel like it would. It, it sucked me in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is match out of all four nights. This is the match I took the least amount of notes for. Um, mm -hmm. The end of yeah. Just gonna go to the end of this match. Uno hits uh, mm -hmm. double knees to the back of the head. It hits a tornado DDT. Then follows it up with ignition. The blaze blade is missed, but. Uh, uh, the Shining Wizard is then missed. Uh, they exchange strikes. Uh, Umino gets an Enziguri. But uh, Sonata comes back with the Shining Wizard. They each get reversals and roll-ups. Umino catches them with the Cradle DDT for two. He hits him with the Blaze Blade. But as he's going for the Death Rider, he gets rolled up into the O'Connor rule. And Sonata gets the win. Yeah, um, I felt like, like Sonata needed the win a little bit more than Shota right now. Um, that being said, I feel like both of these guys are having a, a kind of a, I don't want to say lackluster tournament, but it, especially with Shota, he's struggling. He is struggling. Um, and Sonata, Sonata's interesting. I'm not entirely sure what to make of him quite yet. I think I'm going to have to see how the next couple of nights go and Revisit that. Yeah. Um, yeah. As you said, it was a pretty solid match. Fun functionally speaking, it, it was a, a good wrestling match for me. I just, there wasn't a lot of emotional investment in it. So it was harder to, to draw me in. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm drawn more in by Ren Narita than I am by an Umino or a Sonata. Cause like Ren Narita gives me something to latch onto with him. It, it's that house of torture thing. Evil draws me in more. Like, I don't know what it up. is about House of Torture is, but like bringing people who are struggling with their character work fixes the problem. I don't know what it is. Look at Jack Perry. He's suddenly someone worth giving a shit about. And really? all it took was like a month, a month, not even a couple weeks with House of, House of Torture to unlock that. Look at Ren, what Ren Narita has done for his character work and development in NJPW since joining them. I mean, he did give up his storyline to Jack Perry, but look at what he's become. Look at the development we're getting now. Like, it's so yep. good. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. jump forward to the main event and my pick, Shingo Takagi versus Zack Sabre Jr. Um, these two just so good. The shots they were trading throughout this match. The technical wrestling, Saber avoiding a dragon screw into the neck snap, and getting a triangle on him. Uh, Saber at the standing guillotine gets run to the corner at one point, and Shingo hits his, out of the corner, hits his beautiful belly overhead belly to belly. Just looks so good. Um, Saber catching the pumping bomber, bringing him down to the mat, and just snapping the arm with his legs they, instead of the neck. He did it with the arm and i'm like oh then he gets a disarmer and he folds up the arm and stomps it like he yeah. just oh, he was so good and it's it just oh i loved it i loved it i loved it um the single just smacking the crap out of saber does that sliding bomber as, as walker's calling it now looks mm -hmm. so good uh, he does a sliding bomber, but can't follow up with the pin because he has to grab his arm because Saber's been just beating the piss out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Saber hits a roundhouse kick to the arm, but then Shingo just gets him into the gory special. But Saber flips out of the gory special into a choke, uh, then gets into an octopus. But Shingo pulls Shingo to the ground. He goes for the banana split, which is literally legs pulling 
the one leg one way and the arms pulling the other leg. He goes for that, but Shingo doesn't let him and he gets to the ropes. Uh, Saber snapping the fingers and you could hear it like, oh, like when he snapped the finger and literally you heard Walker go, did you just hear that? And Kid just went, I did. And like, Kid like broke character almost to react to it. It, it, it was, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Shingo unloads the elbow and Sabre fights back and they reverse each other and Sabre gets a Zack driver but he only gets two Shingo hits a headbutt but Sabre hits him, hits him with slaps Shingo comes back with another headbutt Sabre hits a running grip but Shingo comes back with a pumping bomber uh, Sabre recovers gets a sleeper uh, to reverse out of Last of the Dragon uh, but he ends up getting dropped. Like uh, Shingo just like drops back to break it. Uh, Saber ends up pulling an arm bar. He transitions into the triangle. Shingo's fading. He powers up, get, lifts up, lifts up Saber from the triangle onto his shoulders and into Last of the Dragon for the win. I was so I was broken hearted that Saber lost, but this match was absolutely incredible. This. I think this is my match of the tournament so far. I think it ties with one of the matches on night 10, but this might that in one of the matches on night 10, probably are my two matches of the tournament right now. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, how would you add to that? <laughs> this was a great, great match. Um, yeah. It was a perfect kind of meeting of two different, very different styles um, Takagi, not really a, a technician himself, but he knows how to defend against them quite well, as evidenced by this match. Um, Zack Sabre Jr., though, I mean, his wizardry, is that the right word? Wizard, wizardry? Something like that. It's just unmatched. Unmatched in that ring. I love this match. Good pick. Yeah. Good pick. Yeah, absolutely insane, Miniman. And a quick point update after night number nine for the A block. Evil, five and one with 10 points. Saber, four and two with eight points. Tetsuya Naito, Gabe Kid, Sonata, Shota Umino, and Shingo Takagi, all three and three with six points. And you have Jake Lee, Kyle Newman, and Great Ocon, all two and four with four points. Again, this is still anybody's game. Like, I think e I, I sadly think evil has a, has a place in the final three no matter what happens to him I think he gets I think he'll get in uh but Saber could still end up out Naito could end up out like all anybody could end up in here like like Callum Newman or great Ocon or Jake Lee at four points could still come back to get it to get into this tournament. there's still three shows left that's a total of six points if People don't progress past ten. Comes down to tiebreakers. People, certain people can win that way. It, it it'd be crazy. Let's keep the crazy cupcakes to a minimum, shall we? <laughs> yeah, let's have three clear win, clear, three top three clear people at the end, please. For the love of all things holy. Yeah, we move on to night number ten. Gabe mm -hmm. Kid returns to the commentary booth, and man. Did his quality go down in this uh, in commentary on this sh this show? Because all mm -hmm. it was, was telling Walker Seward, your head of commentary, to shut up the entire night, and it just killed all flow these two were having. They had a good flow on night number eight. We talked about it. The two mm -hmm. dogs yipping at each other. Mm -hmm. This was not. This was a dog just mauling another dog. <laughs> is what this felt like. It reminded me of the dinette. Have you seen the movie Up? No. Add it to the list. <laughs> oh, my God. It breaks your heart within 10 minutes. Um, later in the movie, there... Yeah. Who wants those, right? Who wants a heart? Um, anyway, there's... Um, there's a bunch of dogs at one point in this movie and there's the the golden retriever dog his name is doug and he, everyone loves him and then there's the doberman retriever and i don't remember what his name was and every time the doberman spoke every other dog cowered and just shriveled away and that was the energy we got in this one but except for gabe didn't sound like a chipmunk no <laughs> and the dog in the movie sounded like a chipmunk so, yeah, we go into it. David Finley versus Bol oh, Bolton Oleg. 
Uh, the end of this match comes Finley fighting out of Kamikaze. The trade strikes. Finley rebounds with a lariat, dropping Bolton for two. Finley, uh, the Finley roll. What the hell is a Finley roll? He did a move, and, and and Walker called it a Finley roll, but I can't remember what the goddamn move is now. <laughs> I'm not recalling that either. Uh, it was towards the end of the right at the end of the match. Uh, he we'll gets his two out. from the Finley roll. I can't remember what it was. What it was. Uh, the overkill is stopped into a Bolton roll, like German for two. Kamikaze gets stopped into a roll up, but Finley only gets two. Bolton then gets pops from the shoulder, hits like a just jumps and flips, just does a flip into Kamikaze. No running, nothing there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Goes for another kamikaze, but it's reversed into the power bomb, and Finley hit picks him up. Overkill for the win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good match to kind of open up and set the pace for the rest of the night. Because this match or this night, I felt was one of the best nights of the G one we had. Mm -hmm. Like every match that we had on this show was actually very very solid. I felt. I honestly wish I could have turned off commentary and just watch, but with, but have the audio of the match, but without commentary. <laughs> Cause that's how much I disliked, uh, kid on commentary tonight. Like he was, he was getting very annoying for me throughout the whole show. Like it was just, it, it bothered me. Cause I'm like, Walker is very, very good at what he does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I don't know. It just, it, he bothered me throughout this show. Uh, Although I will say in his like excitement, sometimes he says things wrong, much like me, ADHD. Yeah, but it's it, so adorable the things that he says though. He's 22 years. I think he's just turned 22. He, he's 22 years old. You got to give him a pass on that. He's still learning. Oh yeah. 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 hundred percent. And like, I am I'm at my age and I'm sitting here like, yeah, relatable. Like it's, it's always going to be a thing. You get super excited about something, you're going to forget words. It happens. Words are not our friends. No. The English language is kind of a sucky language. So It, it really is. We move on. ELP versus Yu 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 Mura. Uh, kid like, doing like a crybaby thing at ELP while he's on commentary. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought this they, they, these two had a really good, solid match together. They, I think they matched up well together. Mm -hmm. uh, the Towards the end of the match, uh, he ends up uh, uh, ELP gets a burn at Tornado DDT into the burning hammer, hits Thunder Kiss 86 off the top, but only gets two. The CR2 is blocked, the trade strikes. ELP gets a backdrop, but Yurimura hits a German. Uh, ELP comes back with a lariat, but Yurimura comes back with a huge drop kick. Uh, ELP does get a victory roll for two. Uh, Yurimura hits a Snapdragon, only gets two. But he, he goes for Debo, but ELP reverses into an, I'm going to call it the Ida Bashi, that Saida pinning maneuver. Mm -hmm. And he gets the win. He had to, and he had to struggle. He had to struggle a little bit for that one. Like at one point, he was like fully, like every limb he had was off the ground trying to lay and like just concentrate all of his body mass on pinning Yu Yomura. It was great. Yep. But yeah, I felt that these guys did really, really well together. I felt like ELP kind of brought some personality and, and something out of Yuya that we've been missing. Very similar to how like locally we saw that with um Tommy Billington, he was struggling a lot with personality. Then we saw him face Nasty Nate Nixon. Then we saw him continue with Son of Irish. These two men really brought out personality that he's taken with him further down the road and onto AEW, for goodness sake. So mm -hmm. that is something that we got to love and appreciate about El Fantasma is that he has this personality that makes other people comfortable in the ring with him to start showing a little bit more of who they are. Yeah, I'd agree with that mm -hmm. 100%. Yep, mm -hmm. he is. And I, I've seen this man in person a couple times. He is a charisma factory. Oh, uh, yeah. Man, we, he's been to Edmonton to wrestle a couple times. I, really I hope, hope he comes he back again. I want to actually meet him this time instead of yeah, not I being never... able to see him. Both times I didn't actually get to meet him. I, I he was in, he was out. He didn't do any meet and greets or anything. I want to meet this man so badly. Oh. Please, 
Please. Yeah. Please so don't we, let the people here scare you away. Come back to us. Please, I want you back in MS Head. Spencer, <laughs> Harlan, Squiggy, somebody book him. Any one of you, I don't care. I was going to say, I feel like Steve's, at least we'd be able to meet him a little bit easier. Well, uh, Squiggy is ha Squiggy's the one that's booked him before, too. That's the thingy. So. <laughs> so, yeah. But, Squiggy and the thingy. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's a thingy. It makes me laugh. We move on to my Ooh. pick. It's the battle. Of the Empire's crowns up a baby for Jeff Cobb versus Hanare. I and, and I put in my notes, I really wish Newman was on commentary for this. Oh, that would have been a trifecta of perfection. Because I thought I thought Cobb calling Newman in cons matches uh, on uh, night number seven was absolute perfection. He gave a lot of backstory with his boys. Yeah. He was talking about working with them. I think Newman would have been just perfect here to talk about two people he's been learning from. And I was so Absolutely. In a very... <laughs> but and, yeah, and especially because Newman when we did get him on commentary, he did very, very well, I thought. Mm -hmm. I still want Saber on commentary though. And you know I'm honestly surprised at how, like, considering Gabe Kidd's colorful language in ring, I am very pleasantly surprised that he wasn't contributing to the wrestler's retirement fund on this one. Um, but that being said, like, yeah, I think the, the, the experience of Newman on that one would have been a little bit more beneficial overall. Yeah, uh, they these two just start smashing into each other. Cobb eventually drops a Nare. They're just beating the piss out of each other with lariats and and tackles and just uh, Nare getting Cobb down for the PK and the senton looked great. Um, Cobb stops the berserker bomb into a gut wrench suplex, sending Hanari across the ring. And Hanari is not a small person. People don't usually send that man across the ring. Um, <laughs> Cobb does go surfing uh, on Hanare. I was like, oh, you're doing that to your boy, eh? Uh, th these two just wrote the reversals. Uh, Cobb hits a beautiful, uh, they get their fight, they're fighting up. Hanari pu is put up top. Uh, they're fighting up top. Um, he knocks Cobb off. Cobb hits a drop kick from the mat, drop kicking Hanari up top. Comes back up for that delayed super play, super flex. He holds him up top, and then goes back with it. Oh, he only gets one. But then he hits a standing moonsault for two. Um, these two are just so good. Um, just beating the living hell out Hanari getting that beautiful berserker bomb on Cobb at one point for two. Uh, Cobb stops a rampage with a knee, hits a German, but Hanari comes right back with a rampage for two. Hanari hits the liver punch, uh, but Cobb stops Streets of Rage. Both gain speed, and Cobb hits just beautiful lariat. Uh, the Tour of the Islands gets reversed. Hanari hits a spin kick and a headbutt. Cobb catches Hanari running and hits an F5000. And you get this beautiful shot of Cobb standing above Hanari, who's kind of on his knees, like gets up to his knees, and they both just do the like the hang loose, like the Hawaiian hang loose symbol. And Cobb mm -hmm. just grabs the arm, pulls him up into Tour of the Islands for the win. Phenomenal, mm -hmm. just phenomenal. And it's just, just two boys, uh, just working they're two boys that know each other so well and just made for such a good match mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what do you add to that oh this was a great great match and it wasn't like an animosity kind of styled match it was a match that was based over a mutual respect for each other and a mutual friendship of brotherhood there oh i loved this match good pick Good pick. Yeah. Uh, I did dislike the post match, though, of Gabe Kid just laughing at Hanari for losing. Just like an asshole. Well, I mean, it's Gabe Kid. That's what, that's, that's the character. 
Yeah. So we move on to Melball's pick, and I was kind of pissed off that she picked this because this is the match. If she hadn't already picked it, I would have picked it. <laughs> Holy crap. <Sorry. laughs> this is the other one I was talking about. Match of the match of the tournament. This might this in, in the in the night nine main event are both going on my match of the year pick because both were just so good. Yes. There is no story going into this match. And they created beautiful, a beautiful story. Like it's poetry. It's, oh, the youth versus the veteran. It just flowed so perfectly. Yes. Oh, Perfection. Yes. The back and forth, man. Um, just the back and forth. Like, both these men. Uh, uh, Kanosuke getting a DDT on the apron looked just brutal, man. Mm -hmm. um, Goto getting that misdirection lariat to, uh, and to catch it to drop him. Gets that beautiful wheel kick in the corner and hits the backdrop out. Um, just uh, so good. So mm -hmm. good. Um, mm -hmm. Kanosuke hit the run us and then Goto to the floor. Hits a Huge tope on Hilo. Um, and this is another. Oh, Takeshita puts Goto up top, but Goto ends up fighting off the superplex. He headbutts Takeshita and he gets on his back, hits a code red off the top, but only gets two. And this is where Gabe Kick goes, Oh, snap! Like he yeah. like he acted like a fan here, and it was. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah, perfection. Yeah, so we go towards the end. Goto hits the chest, kicks to the chest, gets him up, hits the GTW, but can only get two. Takeshi reverses the GTR into a brain buster. He goes for the brain buster again, but Goto get uh reverses, gets him up into that swing, that suplex into the swing out side effect for two. Uh, Goto hits a headbutt. And uh, to, drops to Kashta. Goto picks him up. G T R. And this was the most surprising result of this tournament for me. Hiroki Goto pins Kanosuke to Kashta for the win. Holy shit, this was good. So good. I am getting like goosebumps just thinking about it again. The ending, the crowd. For this freaking match was very much alive from start to finish. But then the end, chanting Goto's name, it was just, it was the little cherry on top. Like, that was the closest I've ever been to crying again in professional wrestling. I was like, oh my God, what a beautiful moment. Um, yeah, Takeshka really liking his DDTs at the beginning of this one, not just on the apron, but also on the outside there. Really is kind of his go-to thing for a little bit. Um, but yeah, that Tope Kong Hilo. It was picture fracking perfect. And just the way everything ended up being with the camera being in the perfect position to catch the actual dive, then the actual, you know, falling out with Gate or with Gabe Goto taking the fall, Takeshka rolling up the rampway a little bit, the camera being right freaking there and the, the whole time. And the shot it came in on kind of like his face, kind of like from a side angle and showing Goto yeah. in the background. Oh, great. Whoever was directing the, the camera work on this match did such a good job. So everyone was on their A game for this match. It was absolute oh, perfection. As you said, that story. It was a perfect story that came in where it had nothing but was created in the match and played out by these guys in such a beautiful way. Like, ah, so good. There was, the yeah, that code red. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I put that cool flippy thing that Kodo did off the corner. Code red. I got to remember that one. Because mm -hmm. it it kind of, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I thought it looked very similar to a Northern Lights suplex. Or am I very, very off with that? Northern Lights suplex is where you kind of have the test of strength, and then you put your your head under the under the in the armpit and lift them up over your head. Oh, yeah. You're very off with that. 
Um, it, it, it's it, it, it's closer to the Canadian destroyer. <laughs> okay, maybe that's what I was trying to think about because I thought it was something Canadian related. That's why I thought it was Northern Lights. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there was a wheel wheelbarrow German. That Takeshka got on Goto, where Goto just got up and fed him a crazy freaking lariat. Oh, just so good. These guys would not go down. This was the most absolutely perfect, strong style match. This just took over for, for me for being the definition of strong style. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. Go, Goto. I'll I'll give it up to Grape Kid in this match. I think this is the match he was the least annoying for me because he really got into it and like got into the story of like getting on Goto. Mm -hmm. and you can't lose to an outsider. You can't lose to an outsider. Like playing up and then the the, the after uh Kenneth Kitchen loses, he's like, Man, I don't want to face Kenneth Kitchen. He's a loser. He lost to a guy who's forty four years old. <laughs> yeah, he was he was a bit of a dick like that. But yeah. but it, it, he wasn't a complete a hole throughout this entire match. He you, no. you felt him really zone in and be a dick, yeah, but not yeah. an asshole. Then he went back to being an asshole in the main event. But <laughs> I mean, look at the main event. He's reason yeah. to be jelly. Even though he kind of has a small connection to Red and Rita in the fact that they're Bullet Club adjacent. <laughs> It would appear that the War Dogs feel the same way that I do about House of Torture's leechiness of the Bullet Club name. Kid, uh, Finley didn't seem to hate evil too much when he was on commentary, but that was a whole thing. <laughs> Finley seemed pretty tame on commentary, not gonna lie. Yeah. So we get Ren Narita versus Yoda Suji. Uh, I literally was wondering why it says 2013 beside Yoda Suji, but I realized that's the time of the match, 20 minutes and 13 seconds. <laughs> Yoda Suji, 2013. I thought these two, for all the crap that uh, Narita pulled in this match, I thought they did a really good job here. I think they had a really strong match. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the match, though, Suji unloading on Narita. Narita uh, gets a choke, but Suji comes reverses into a falcon arrow for two the gene blaster is dodged uh and suji is sent into the exposed corner narita attacking the knee goes for the double cross but suji does that where he goes down but plants his hands and blocks the move and then pops back up looks mm -hmm. so good and just hits this, this knee to the face of a seated uh narita just rocking him uh he then lines up Narita turns around, hit, and he hits Gene Blaster for the win. Absolutely phenomenal! It, it, like a really good main event. It just mm -hmm. to the match, mm -hmm. the few matches we picked. But damn, it was really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Narita jumped Suji at the beginning there. Um, it was shenanigans from Narita. Narita has really picked up the solo shenanigans. I'm not. I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about it. Um, just because, like, it's a it's a house of torture shtick, so it's gonna be a thing. But like, we have seen him utilize Kanemaru a little bit, and I'm not, I'm really not feeling the push up bar in the way way in the manner that he's utilizing it. I'm mm. hoping there's some better development on it, um, because it he could definitely make it into something that is not obnoxious. I have hope that he can. I just, given who backs him, I, 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 I'm losing hope that he will. Um, yeah. There was one part where um, Red Shoes stole the chair from Narita, which I appreciated. Um, Red mm. Shoes being a superhero again didn't stop him when he's surrounded by chairs, though. So, yeah, he tried. He tried. Um, again, uh, last thing I wanted to say was there was a point where Suji was locking in that Boston Crab, and I had hope. Going for a dingle dangle. Please, Mr. Suji, give me a dingle dangle. Just one, please. No dingle dangles for you. You shush. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> and that's a reverse dingle dangle, by the way. I don't care. He can give me any dingle dangle he wants. It's Yoda Suji. 
Oh. Anyway, any day. Just remember, bad dude Tito does it best. He, you know, I can't even, I can't dispute that one. <laughs> I can't dispute that one at all. No. <laughs> Go on with your bad self. So a quick point update before we get out of here in the B block. We have David Finley and Jeff Cobb on top four and two with eight mm -hmm. points. Then you have Hiroki Goto, Konosuke Takesha, Hinare, Yuji Yurimura, Yoda Suji, and Ren Narita, all three and three with six points. And then you have Bolton Oleg and El Fantasmo, two and four with four points. Again, this block is so close, man. Like anybody, like it's so close. Like, again, Fantasmo at four points. Still ha is not mathematically eliminated, nor is Bolton Oleg. It it's mm -hmm. kind of insane. It is. Crazy cupcakes. Crazy, crazy cupcakes. That has been the theme of this G1. It really has. It really has. It, it really has. But we've come to the end of another episode of NJPW Poodle Rose Review. Uh, you can find me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada dude. You can find me on that uh, Facebook at Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk. You can also find me in the comment section. And when I post over at BAM Weekly on the Facebook, uh, go check them out. Uh, some great new stuff coming up within the next couple weeks. Some new uh, things coming from there. I think we're going to be having a chat this weekend about some stuff going to be happening over there. And that will be coming within the next couple of weeks. So be ready for that. So go check them out, Bam Weekly, before the name changes. And then we change the name on here. Uh, go over to twitch.tv slash our local establishment or youtube.com slash at our local establishment where you can find me next Wednesday. I thought it was this Wednesday, but it's next Wednesday. <laughs> uh, you can find me doing Ant the Ant Man uh, MC MC MCU Rebound Show. So check that out. The, the Ant Man. Ant Man. Whoa. Hi. <laughs> it's, his, it's his arm waving at you. Well, it was better than where it started. That's very true. <laughs> it looked like a poo. I know. Uh, you can also find us over at <sighs> Backbreaker Video, youtube.com slash at Backbreaker Viewer, Mike Samocast, all our stuff. One week later, we really do appreciate you dropping all of our stuff over there, Mike. If you want to see him live, go to twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. You uh, said it, AW Watch Longs every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Sunday, doing watch longs of all that. And then pretty much every other day of the week, he's gaming over over there. And if you want replays of the gaming content, go to youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming, where you can find stuff from him, Mr. PJC, this little guy right here, Rick Jules, and their frequent guest. Taylor J. Yep. Caitlin J. Caitlin J. Caitlin J. Caitlin J. You did like an Orange Cassidy Lazy J there. Yeah, I have I have the curve on it. It's the curve. It's the J. It's the, there's a curve in a J. Not not a J. That's an L. This is a J. Okie dokie, Artie Jokey. Oh, uh, Melball, where can they oh my find God. Where can they find uh, it? If you're wanting to follow a Melball, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melball. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky. I'm Mel Ball Cox. You can also find me on our local establishments programming with this guy every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. And this is not for Japanese Wrestling Update. This Friday, we are we are going to be putting up an episode, but we will not be doing it live as we will be attending the top talent show at Midway, where we're going to be seeing Mr. Dijak taking on the king with the razzle-dazzle Western king with Gussie. Yes. I think we also have Joey Janela's there, uh, Broski yeah. Jimmy's there. Uh, mm -hmm. F ranks his return. Like, ah, so good. It's going to be a great show. So, yeah, we're going to be there. So, it's going to be a pre recorded show. Like how I actually remembered what we were on there. Now she's going to forget. Yeah, yeah pre recorded episode, 8 p.m. Mountain 10, unless it's not. Then we'll let you know. 
You can also find me on Astro Bazaar's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We are going to be putting together a show for you this week, so it should be released before Japanese Wrestling Update on Friday because we got some ish to talk about. SummerSlam just happened, and Mammy ain't happy. So we got some stuff to talk about on Deer. <laughs> if you're wanting to watch New Japan Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below. It's njpwworld.com. It is a weird amount of yen now, or approximately, we're going to say 10 Canadian because I love Sean's fears, but it's more like, <laughs> it's more like 14 something, according to this guy over here. It's still a good price to watch some amazing professional wrestling, and if you are hesitant about taking the plunge, make sure you check out their NJPW World TV title matches. They are all 100% free, and you can get a taster to see if you are interested in getting a full subscription. Andre, my trusted friend, Polly, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just need to say thank you all again. We really do appreciate the support. On our way to 200 subscribers, we're at, I think last I looked, 194. So please share, uh, hey. please share us out to everybody. We really do appreciate that. So like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. We love hearing from you. We love talking to you. We love responding to you for all the great comments you put down in our comments thread. Uh, don't forget to share us out to all your friends, family, and just crazy little weirdos. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Definitely not answering that. Yeah, it's a little late. Yeah. Come on, love me that. I am your mother. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Adios.